This journey has been glorious. Wow, I can see so much from up here. Man, oh, it's been everything that Jesus has promised. Oh, man, I'm learning so much about God. And there's so much more to go. Oh, man, I wish, I wish everybody can, can experience this, can come on this journey. Oh, my friends, my mom, they don't even know about Mount God. Oh, wow. Oh, man, I really, I got to take a little rest. Uh, let me, uh, come on down here. Oh, oh you know, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how I can get them to come on this journey. Come experience Mount God. See, uh, come see the things that Mount God has to offer. Uh, you know who might know? My friend Jacob. My friend Jacob's been here for like ever. He's so old. He might understand how to get my friends and my, my family to come experience Mount God. Let, let me give him a call really quick. Um, all right. Uh, hey, what up, dude? How you doing? Hey, uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well, actually. Um, I, was, I was, well, climbing Mount God, and I was starting to wonder, like, how can I get my friends and family to come climb this mountain with me? Well, man, honestly, I can really help you. Where are you at? I can uh, come help you. Do, do you. Where are you at? Um, hold on. Let me take a quick look around. I th I'm on the, uh, the Cleft of the Rock. Oh, Cleft of the Rock. Dude, I know exactly where that is. I'll be right there, okay? Okay, sweet, sweet, sweet. Oh, man. Brad, hey, what's up, How's dude? it going? How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. This is so much better than the Cave of Distraction. I completely agree. Man, I am so good to see you. This it's, journey's been incredible, hasn't it? It, it really has. The, the Holy Spirit's been helping me up since yesterday. Yes. It's been, it's been incredible, but I was, I, was really just starting to, I was really starting to feel down. I, was, I want my friends, my mom, my little sisters to yeah. come experience, experience Mount God, but I, just, I don't know how to get them here. No, I, I know exactly what you mean, man. How can I help you? Uh, I, don't, I really, I'm not, I'm not sure I... I, I, don't, I don't know. It's, they don't even want to experience Mount God. And I'm, I'm so young, you know. They're not going to listen to me. Wait, what do you mean you're too young? You, you're old and you're a pastor, Jacob. I just, uh, you, can, you can go reach them for me. Well, well Brent, I, I know what you're saying, man, but I can't. I, I can't minister to them like you can. <laughs> listen, li l l let me get my Bible. I think I can help you. Um, let's see. You know, it reminds me of a story. There was a young man by the name of Jeremiah, Jeremiah. who was in the same situation as you are, Brent. Now, now, I love this scripture, guys. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Let's see what it says. Uh, Jeremiah was in the same place, and God spoke to Jeremiah. And listen to what God said to Jeremiah. It says this, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. Everybody say sanctified. sanctified. Listen, that's a big word that means to be set apart. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Isn't that so cool? That shows me, listen, God has a purpose for your life. Say, I have a purpose. And, and that word set apart literally means it's like there's this huge group of people. You know, there's like almost 1,200 people in the room. And then you know what it means to be set apart? It means, stand up. This is my daughter, Reese. Boom. He picks you up out of the whole crowd and says, I want to use you. Thank you. You can sit down. So he says, I've set you apart, Brent. But you know what Jeremiah said? This is so funny. Jeremiah responds to God and he says, Oh, Lord, I can't speak. I'm only a youth. I'm too young. Brent, That's where honestly, I am. it's exactly what you just said. <laughs> exactly what I just said. But I love what the Lord said, and he responds right to him, and he says, Don't say I'm just a youth. For I will send you to whoever I want you to go to. I can be sent? You can be sent. Because, dude, I can't go to your elementary school. I can't go to your school. I can't go into your home. Man, you're there. But you know what? Also, the Bible, also, there's this guy named Paul who wrote to uh, his young disciple named Timothy. Everybody say Timothy. 
And he wrote to Timothy and he said this in 1 Timothy 4.12. Let no one despise you for your youth. Do you see that? But listen, what does it say? Be an example. Everybody say example. example. To the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith in purity. Come on, isn't that awesome? Say, I'm an example. So listen, Brent, this is what this means, guys. This is, this is what it means. Listen, that means when you leave here, you're called to be an example to everyone around you. Can I tell you, look at me, because you're a Christian, you're meant to live different. That means, Brent, what's going to happen is you're going to go back home and they're going to see the joy in your life. They're going to see the peace in your life. They're going to see how just radiant you are with God. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to look at him and they're going to say, Brent, whatever happened to you, I want to happen in me. That sounds awesome. So you know what that tells me, guys? When you go back to school in a few months, you're not just going back as a third grader. You're not just going back as a fourth grader. No, no, no. You're going back full of the Holy Spirit with Jesus on the inside of you. You're not just some normal kid. No, Christ lives on the inside of you. Listen, if you see somebody, listen, you can go back and be Jesus to your friends. When you go back to school and you see somebody who's being bullied, we don't just turn an eye to that. No, no, no. We go show the love of Jesus to them. If you see somebody sitting by themselves, you go sit beside them. You friend them. You carry that love. So, so Brent, man, you're going to be an example to all your friends when you go back. Really? And they're going to they're gonna look up to me and they're, they're going to you, they're gonna see Jesus in me. Absolutely. Dude. That's incredible. Yeah. But. How do, I, how do I go about like talking to them? What if they don't, what if they don't want to know God? What if they don't, they don't listen to me? Yeah. No, I, I totally get that, man. I totally, totally, totally understand. You know what? I think I know somebody who can help. You, you met Miss Karen the other day. I right? did. I met her yesterday. Yeah, I think Miss Karen can help us because she knows how to pray for people who, who may not want to serve God, and, and she's seen some incredible things happen. And honestly... She lives up here on this mountain. So, so, so let me give her a call, okay? <laughs> She'll pick up. Well, that's three rings already. Dude, you know what? She's probably so high up on this mountain, she don't even have service. <laughs> that sounds about right. Hey! Miss Karen! Miss Karen! Where are you? Miss Karen! Miss Karen! She has to hear us, right? She has to. <laughs> oh! Oh! I knew it! I knew it! You calling me? Well, yes, yes, we were trying to call you on your phone, but there's no service. Oh! Oh, I've been seeing some stuff up here in God. You would not believe what I have found oh, so about awesome. God today, Jacob. Oh, I love it. Hey, Brent. Hi. How's it going? It's going well. How are What'd you? What'd you call me down for? So, so Brent, <laughs> he loves being on Mount God. Me too. And the, he wants the people that he loves yeah. to encounter God just like he has, just like I have, just as you have. But yeah. he's concerned that what if their hearts don't want to turn to God? What if they're, they're not really hungry to climb the mountain? What, what, what can he do? Oh, oh yeah. That's a real thing, G Brent. You know something? I know exactly what to do. Yeah. I'm coming down there. Where are y'all? We're at the cleft of the rock. You know where it is. I know exactly where the cleft of the rock. Yeah, yeah. Give me a second. Yeah, dude. I knew. I'm on my way. <laughs> She's coming. She's coming. Dude, I knew it, bro. She lives. She lives on. No, she no. she legit does. She has a timeshare up here. <laughs> it's so cool. Pretty sure she owns some real estate up she here. Owns it. Hey. Hey, oh, I'm so oh, glad oh. you're here. You remember hey, Brent. Brent. Oh, what's going? Yeah, I just talked to you yesterday. Yes, ma'am. Oh, what about the Holy Spirit? Did you it, receive the Holy Spirit, Brent? Yes, ma'am, and it has He's been living in you. Glorious. <laughs> Did he help you? He's helped me so much. He was filled with the Holy Spirit yesterday. Oh, come on. How many of you were filled with the Holy Spirit yesterday? Whoa. Now, what were we saying? 
so you're he, concerned about his friends. He, he's worried about it, and he wants them to encounter God like he has. Okay. And you're concerned that they may not want that? Yes, ma'am. I, my mom and my sisters, they, what, I'm just, I'm wondering, what if they don't even, they don't want to know, want to know God, like, they don't even know that Mount God exists. Yeah. How many of you have friends like Brent, or maybe your mom or dad or somebody that does not know God? Raise your hand. Okay, let me see you. I need you kids right in the front to go be very quiet. Can I have a chosen member to come and just sit with these kids right here on the front? Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, Heaven. And Heaven, Miss Heaven is going to, in her name, awesome. Her name is Heaven. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremiah. He's not the devil for real. He's actually an awesome man of God. <laughs> uh, the devil's bad, but Jeremiah is not. Jeremiah, can you help those boys and girls to sit there and be very quiet? That's fantastic. Heaven and Jeremiah, you just read out of Jeremiah. I did. Isn't that crazy? You just said Jeremiah thought he was too young. I did. How many of you have ever felt like you were too young to do anything for God? Put your hands down. How old was I when I was filled with the Holy Spirit? Does anybody? Oh. You already remember. Do you know what? When I was eight years old, I found out that God can use you when you're eight. God can use you when you're six. You know what happened when I received the Holy Spirit? I started telling all of my friends about it at school. I want you to sit up straight. This is our last service, and it's very important. So will you not talk? You can talk the whole van ride home. But I really want you to listen today, all right? So sit up straight. Say, Miss Karen, I'm listening. I, you know why? I want you to get this because you are very important to God. You are very, very important. You matter. I don't care if you're six, five, three. I don't care how old you are. God doesn't either. You are very important. You say one more time, say, Miss Karen, I'm going to listen. Okay, now. I had received the Holy Spirit when I was eight. I started telling all my friends about it at school. Some of them didn't want to hear. Some of them did. And some of them wanted to receive the Holy Spirit too. And you know what? Their mother wouldn't let them come to my church because we spoke in tongues. And I didn't know about that. So I didn't know that everybody wouldn't want the Holy Ghost. But some of them people didn't understand it. And so I told my friends, I said, you know what? You can come to my house. If you can't come to my church, you can come to my house. We'll have a spend the night party. And we'll call it a Holy Ghost spend the night party. And you know what happened? I invited seven of my friends from school that didn't have the Holy Ghost. And they came to my house. And I said, we're going to roast marshmallows. And then we're going to have church in my living room. And one of my friends came up to me and she said, Miss Karen, I'm going to fast the marshmallows. She said, I want the Holy Ghost right now. So we went in my living room and we prayed from six in the evening till one in the morning, me and my little friends that had all seven of them got the Holy Ghost in my living room that night. All seven of them. And I was just a little girl just like you. I was just a little girl just like you. I wasn't big and old like I am now. I was a little girl just like you. And all of my friends received the Holy Ghost. I'm glad I didn't think I was too young to preach when I was a little girl. Some people said, you can't preach. I just preached anyway. Because they didn't call me God did. Yeah. So you can preach anyway. I know another little girl, Brent. Oh, this little girl, she was really, really powerful. In 1982, I was in my house getting ready for a concert. I used to sing a lot. And I was going to a concert and I was getting dressed. And all of a sudden, I heard a sound from my living room across the house. I thought, what is that sound? I left the back of my house and came out, and on my television screen was a television program called 700 Club. It was an old Christian television program that they, well, they still have it on there, actually. But, and oddly enough, Pat Robertson died day before yesterday. I didn't even know that until, I think, yesterday. I couldn't believe it. So this man that, owned, that was the over 700 Club, his show was on television, and I walked out and I looked at my television screen, 1982, President, the president of the United States at that time was President Reagan, right? And there was this little girl, about eight years old, on my television screen. And she was praying. And the power of God was so strong on that eight-year-old little girl, I began to weep and weep. And I never got over it, listening to this little girl. She's from Romania. 
She was about eight. Her daddy was a pastor in this country of Romania. And when she was there, their country was under the government or the power of communism, which is a bad, bad government. It's not a good thing. And they were oppressing the Christians. And they put her daddy in prison. And they did very, very bad things to her daddy at certain times. And even this little girl and her mother and some of her siblings, they called them, I, I don't know the name of it, it was like Siri police, but it was the communist police. They did bad things to them because they believed in Jesus. But this little girl, even when she was like five, six, and seven, she would pray and Jesus would speak to her and she would tell her family what Jesus said. And they ended up being set free from that nation. Her dad got out of prison miraculously. And they came to America. And when they came to America, they began, this, someone heard their story and put them on the 700 Club. And that's why you'll hear them. They speak, I believe it was Russian, Romanian. They speak another language, but you can understand them. And this little girl prayed. And I want you to watch Brent. I want you to watch this little girl. She's eight years old-ish. And I want you to watch this little girl. And I'm going to play the whole clip because I want you to see how God raised that girl. Now, please do not talk during this clip. I want you to watch this. I want the adults to watch this very carefully. Again, this is in, this is in 1982. Like I said, President Reagan was our president. And I want you to watch how this little girl, she doesn't just pray little prayers like she doesn't think God can hear. She prayed bold. She prayed like Jeremiah, the prophet. She prayed for the nations. And God answered this little girl's prayers. Watch this little girl, the same one I saw in my living room. Watch. And no respect for the people. All right, now, you've got this sweet little girl, Delia, with us here. They, what did, honey, did they do to you? The communist police took you? Did they, did they hurt you? Yeah, they struck on my neck and pulled my hair in. They, they choked you. Now, how old were you then? Uh, six. You were six years yeah. old, and they choked you and pulled your hair? The police? Why yeah. did they do that? Because I prayed and I believed in God. A six-year-old child who prayed and believed in God, and they choked you and pulled your hair? Yes. I understand Jesus spoke to you when you were five or six and told you something. What did he tell you? Oh, that, um, that he would help us to come here in America. And I had a vision. I saw a airplane, you know, surrounded with, with angel. And uh, we were in that airplane. And, you know, we came with it in America. And we, all, we were all saved. You didn't, there wasn't any possibility that, of that happening, though. You didn't tell, did you tell Delia you were going to do that? We never knew that, we never ever dreamed that we'll come to America. But at the time when the Lord showed her this vision, it happened when we left behind our apartment because we, our lives were in too much danger so, with the city police and we went to live in hidings in the mountains in different Christian homes mm -hmm. and we were very discouraged. And there in the mountains when we were hiding from the city police, the Lord encouraged us and strengthened us through this little girl. She said she gave her visions and the Lord would speak to her and she would come to the parents and would say, the Lord told me to tell you not to be afraid and not to shake and tremble in front of the evil ones because God will deliver you with his mighty hand. I, I wish we had more time. Donna Summers is going to sing for us in just a minute. We've, we've got to have that. But I, I want Delia to pray. I want to pray for those people in Romania. Those people in, the, I want to pray for the people in Russia the people who don't know God and ask God to bring revival. And this little girl was in our prayer meeting and just the Lord just speaks to her. <laughs> and, and I would like the people in the audience to pray. It, we just cannot have Christians under this kind of brutality and sooner or later God must bring down that empire of evil. It is an empire of evil. And we want to ask the, the you pray for us. And I'm going to ask everybody across the world and wherever they're watching to pray with you. Will you do that, honey? Dear Jesus in heaven, I pray, Lord, for the 700 Club. I ask you, Jesus, to protect this television station program. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, 
Oh, I ask you, Jesus, to protect the 700 Club and to touch it, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, also for the people that are working here, God. I ask you to meet their needs. Bless them, Jesus, and touch their hearts, God. Protect them. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord. I love and I praise you, God, in heaven. Oh, and now I pray, Jesus, also for all the people that are watching this television station program. I ask you, Jesus, to meet their needs, God, and to touch their hearts, Lord. And they're sick, Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to touch their bodies. Or if they have some pains in their bodies, heal them, Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray. And if there are people that are watching this television station program that do not know you, Jesus, I ask you, God, to set them free from all the bondages, Jesus. Save them, Lord, right now. Jesus, I pray. Oh, I love you, God in heaven. And I praise you, Jesus. Oh, now I pray, Jesus, for America, God. I ask you to touch this country, Lord. Protect America. I ask you to bless America in a special way, Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Oh, I pray, God in heaven, also for the churches in the city and in America and in all over the world, oh God. I ask you to bring a revival in America and in all the world, oh God. Bring a revival in all the churches. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, Jesus. I pray for the pastors in America and in all the world. Bless the ministry. Touch the heart, Jesus. And be with them, God. Protect them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Oh, I ask you, Jesus, to touch all the little children in America and in all the world, Jesus. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, God. And help them, Jesus. On the name of Jesus, I pray. Oh, I pray, Jesus, now for the present Reagan of America, God. Oh, I ask you, Jesus, to touch his heart, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Oh, I ask you, God in heaven, oh, to meet his needs, Lord. Protect him, Jesus. Help him to put prayers back in school, God. Be with him, Jesus, and touch him. Touch this free and beautiful country, God. Oh, I praise you and I love you, Jesus. Now I also pray, God in heaven, for, for Romania and all the communist countries, Jesus. Oh, I ask you, Jesus, to touch all the people in there that are suffering for you and all the people that are in jail, God, that are suffering for your name, Jesus. Oh, I ask you, God, to help them and be with them, Jesus. Oh, give all the people, Jesus, that are suffering for you there, Jesus. Give them wisdom, power, and victory, Lord, to overcome the Satan and the evil spirits, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, help them, Lord, and lay your hands on all the communist countries, in Jesus' name I pray. Oh, I ask you, God, to protect Russia and to touch you, Jesus. Right now, Jesus, I ask you to make Russia know you better, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray for Israel, Jesus. Touch you, God. Protect that country, Lord. Make Israel know you better, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I love you, God, in heaven. And thank you, Lord, for that country, Jesus. I ask you to protect it, Jesus. Lay your hand on it, Jesus. Make Israel know you better, God. And be with it, Jesus. Touch all the people in Israel, Jesus. Oh, 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 I praise you and I love you.
I thank you, Jesus, for helping us to come here in America, God. Thank you for helping us, Jesus, to come here in this free country, God. Where we can go and spread your gospel, Jesus, in all the world, oh God. I thank you for dying for us on the cross in the Calvary, Jesus. I praise you and I love you, Lord. Help us to be ready for a coming, God. Give us the power and victory to go and spread your gospel in all America and in all the world, oh Jesus. Oh, your mighty God, your precious God, and a beautiful God. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise I love you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you see, Brent, God can use a child to pray. I want you to sit up and straight and listen. God can use you when you're a little girl like that. She prayed and God heard her. And may I just say this? She had heard somebody else pray. Parents, grandparents, children's pastors. You have no idea how important. Your voice is to their ears. You pray like you want to hear them pray. That girl had heard a mom and dad pray because it was life or death for them. And they taught that little girl to pray in such a way that she moved heaven for the sake of nations. Look at Miss Karen. You can pray for cities. You can pray for this nation. You can pray for your school. You can pray for your mama. You can pray for your daddy. When God hears you pray, something happens. I want to show you what happens. Cut me an aisle right here. Can you just spread out right here? Give me a little aisle. Perfect. Can you move that way? You move this way. Perfect. Cut me an aisle over there. I need two aisles. Can you? Okay. Can you all scoot? Let's see. Let me see. I need y'all to move right through here. It's going to be very important that y'all keep this clear for me for just a few minutes. Keep this clear. I'm going to show you something. Keep this good over here, my sweet baby, in the orange shirt. You're so precious. Would y'all scoot that way for me? Cut the aisle. Cut the aisle. Thank you, Taya. Thank you. Can you help it stay clear? Okay. Let's scoot it on just this side of the monitor. Just this side of the monitor. Make sure that the aisles stay clear. I'm going to need a chosen member to make sure the aisles stay completely clear and that there's a con constant path. Taya, will you do that the whole time I speak? Make sure the aisle doesn't get filled. Please do that. Look at Miss Karen. Give me, give me a tissue that tore me up. It always does. It's never grown old to me from the first time I heard that little girl pray. I want you to sit down and not move. We're almost finished, but you have to get this last part. It's the most critical of all. Listen. When that little girl was praying, something was happening. <coughs> she was not just talking to the air. When you pray in your bedroom at home, you're not just talking to the ceiling or the air. God hears. Say, God hears. God hears. Say, God answers. Do you know how I showed you last night that the Holy Spirit is with me? How many of you receive the Holy Spirit? How many of you have the Holy Spirit in you? Then you know what that means? Holy Spirit, come and show me, show them one more time. Since they can't, since you can't see the Holy Spirit inside of me, I'm going to let him represent what the Holy Spirit does. I'm going to let it happen. Do you remember I told you last night? Where, what happens? Everywhere I go, he goes. Brent, are you looking? Yes, ma'am. This means everywhere I go, he's with me, right? So that means when I get home, the Holy Spirit loves to pray. One of the Holy Spirit's favorite things to do is pray. So I love to do what the Holy Spirit likes to do. So what I do is when you get home, you need to go fix a place in your bedroom to pray. Where you can get with the Holy Spirit every day and just you and him by yourself talk. How many of you have a bedroom or a place of your own at home? Okay, even if you share it with somebody, you can still find you a place. You go in your room when you get home, 
You fix you a place to pray. Some, some kids have gone in their closet before and just cleaned out a spot in their closet. And every morning, every morning, say every morning. They get in that place with God and they close that door and they have a notebook out. They write prayers to God. They pin pictures of people on the wall they're praying for. You can pin scriptures on the wall and you get in there with the Holy Spirit and you get with the Holy Spirit every day. And you and the Holy Spirit pray in your closet. Oh, you get in that place right every morning before you go to school, before you do anything else. You get God's Word. Bring me my Bible, please. And you get God's Word and you and the Holy Spirit. Oh, you just pray, pray, pray. See, you get God's Word. This is huge. you got to love His Word. Every day you read this book. Every day. Every day. So you get your Bible, you mark it up, you write down what God is telling you. And the Holy Spirit will tell you things. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And you mark that, you write that down. You know what else you do? Because since he's living in you, you got a room for him in your heart and your house. You take out anything in your bedroom that he doesn't like. God the Father said, I'm sending the Holy Spirit. Now, when I send him, don't grieve him. What does that mean, Miss Karen? Don't make him sad. Don't do anything that makes the Holy Spirit sad. Now then, you're not living just by yourself. Somebody's living in you and it's the Holy Spirit. So watch what you say that what you say doesn't make him sad and grieved. Make sure that anything in your room, oh, stay with me. Anything in your room is is only the stuff he likes. The other day, someone was at my house and they were spending the night. I had guests. And it was late and I wanted to go to bed and they wanted to stay up and watch television. So as I was going to my bedroom, I walked, I told them, all good night. And then I turned back around and I said to my guest in my house, I'm going to bed. Whatever you watch on my television, just remember, the Holy Spirit lives in my house. So make sure anything you watch is something he will enjoy. The Holy Spirit doesn't like hearing the Father's name blasphemed. So in my house, if anything ever curses my father's name, a movie or anything else, that thing is cut off in my house. I don't let anything in my house, I don't let a movie, I don't let anything in my house that curses my father's name because the Holy Ghost lives in my house. So you clean out anything that's not of God. Well, just the same way that he's in me, he's in you. That's the same way he was doing for that little girl. I need somebody that can help me. Uh, Yeah. Come here. It's not just for grown-ups. The Holy Spirit, just like that little girl that prayed. What is your name? My name is Soraya. Soraya? Soraya. Oh, pretty. How old are you? Eight. Eight. How about that? She's eight. So, Soraya, I want you to walk over there. I want you to... Soraya, do you have Jesus in your heart? Yes. I thought so. Holy Spirit is in your heart? Yes. Oh, looky there. Even a heart on her shirt. Holy Spirit is living in there. Holy Spirit, pretend like you're going to school and watch what happens to Soraya when she goes to school. When she leaves the ramp from this afternoon, Holy Spirit's not going to stay in this building by, by himself. You know what he's going to do? You're not going to leave the Holy Spirit here. Pretend like you're going to get in your church van. Just walk right over there. Pretend like you're going, oh, look what happened. When you leave today, the Holy Spirit's going right with you. Soraya, pretend like you're going to school. Walk into your school. Well, there you go. Looky there. Soraya, pretend like you're going home to your house. Show her what happens when you go, she goes home to her house. <laughs> there he goes. Soraya, come back over here and go over here to your mother and tell her you're home from the ramp and, and give her a big hug and watch what happens. See, there you hug. See, say hello to your mother, Soraya. Yeah, see. <laughs> now come back over here, Soraya. Bring me my chair, Isaiah. Isaac, I mean, bring me my chair. Put the chair right here. I want to show you what happens when now when Soraya prays when she gets home. Soraya, sit down in the chair. What happens when Soraya prays? Mm -hmm. Soraya, turn and face the audience. Would you do that? Okay. I want you to, I want somebody else's to help me. I need the father and I need the son to come out here and help me. Okay. Now they are in heaven, aren't they? All right, go sit over there, please. Just over here, over here. Right over here. Right back there. 
What happens when that little girl that was you just watched on the screen that was praying? When she was praying, I'm going to show you what was happening. When she prayed, the same thing that was, is, was happening as what's going to happen when you pray and you get home. Soraya, do you have any friends that don't know Jesus, Soraya? You do? Do you have any family members? Yeah? Would you mind telling me the name of one person that you love that doesn't know God? Um, Think of somebody. Okay. You want to say it right here? He's my Uncle Kevin. Uncle Kevin? He used to what? He used to know Jesus and then he stopped. And you love him? Yes. And you're going to pray for him, right? So she has an uncle that doesn't know God. So what's going to happen when she gets home is she's going to start praying. She doesn't know how to pray for her uncle Kevin like she ought to. But the Bible says in Romans 8 that the Holy Spirit, look at Miss Karen, everybody in here, the Holy Spirit knows Kevin, her uncle. And the Holy Spirit loves him even more than her. And the Holy Spirit knows what the Father is thinking about Kevin in heaven. Yes, he knows the will of God. The Holy Spirit knows the will of the Father because remember what we said last night? They are one. The three are one. The Bible says that Jesus is right now in heaven sitting at the right hand of the Father. And the Bible says in Romans 8 that he, Jesus, is interceding for us in heaven. Still praying. Jesus is still in heaven praying for us. How does that happen? How does he know? How does he know even what to say, what to pray? Watch, 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 watch. When we pray, we, when we pray the will of God, the Holy Spirit hears us. And I want to show you what happens. Okay, Soraya, I want you to pray for your uncle over the phone. Will you do that? And the Holy Spirit may tell you what to pray. Because the Bible says, when you don't know how to pray as you ought, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. Pray for your uncle, sweetheart. God, please help my uncle Kevin to keep start knowing Jesus again. Lord, let your will be done. Lord, let your will be done. Uncle Kevin will be saved. Uncle Kevin will be saved. Okay. He will come back to the Lord. Now, she just prayed that. Now, watch what happens. The Holy Spirit heard it. The three are one. Jesus interceding to the Father about Uncle Kevin. Because the Holy Spirit prayed through her. Jesus knows what we're praying. He's interceding to the Father. The will of God is to save Uncle Kevin. So watch what happens. And the Lord sends his spirit out to go reach Uncle Kevin right then. They are going to find Uncle Kevin and answer her prayers. Come on, give God praise right now. Thank you so much. Thank you, sweetheart. Come on, give God praise because that's what happens when you pray. When you pray in your bedroom, say something's happening. Say something's happening. Say when I pray, something happens. Even when you can't see it, it's happening. And you know what else? God's going to give you boldness when you pray. Did that little girl pray with boldness? Brent, did she pray with boldness? Yes, ma'am, she did. She didn't pray little bitty prayers, did she? No, she didn't. The Holy Spirit in you will give you boldness to pray. The Holy Spirit in you will help you not to be afraid when you pray. I know another boy that was 12 years old. Anybody 12? Where? Where are my 12-year-olds? Okay, put your hands down. Okay, perfect. Put your hands down. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Now watch. I know a boy myself. He was 12 years old. He came here to the ramp several times. His dad is a friend of mine. His name is Lou Engel. Lou Engel is a mighty man of prayer. And when Jesse, his son, was 12 years old, Jesse said to his daddy, Daddy, I had a dream. Jesse was a big baseball player. There's nothing wrong with baseball. But sometimes the Lord may ask you to do something. And Jesse was willing to do it. 
And there was, Jesse loved baseball, but the Lord spoke to his heart about it. And called Jesse at 12 years old to run with his dad's mission to bring revival to America and end abortion and send revival to this generation. So in the year 1999, Jesse was 12 years old and he went on a 40 day fast with his father. His father was doing a complete 40 day fast. Jesse at 12 years old did a fast of, of liquids and smoothies and juices only at 12 years old for 40 days. And tell them the dream Jesse had. Jacob, tell Brent yeah. the dream he had. Yeah, so Brent, he has this dream. Listen, when you begin to seek God, God's going to speak to you in so many different ways, even through dreams at night. And Jesse had this incredible dream where in the dream, there was the God gang and then there was the devil gang. And they were playing in a big basketball game against each other. Well, he wanted to be a part of the game. So he went and asked, hey, I want to sign up because I want to be on God's gang. And, and someone said, well, well, you have to be 21. The age is 21 for you to be a part of God's gang. But they said this, if you sign up right now, you can be on God's gang at 12 instead of 21. Come on. So that was his dream. Yeah. At 12 instead of 21. So Jesse thought, I'm 12 and I can say yes to God at 12 and be on God's team. And he told his daddy, I'm going to lay down baseball this year and I'm going to run with you, daddy, in your mission. And he went on a 40-day fast and they, they did a prayer call to Washington, D.C. in 1999 called The Call. 400,000 young people came and joined them. And Jesse Engel, at 12 years old, stood on that platform. And I want you to look at his prayer at a, of a 12-year-old boy who prayed right after a, this fast. And I want you to look at this boy pray. Kids, don't talk. Watch the screen. God, I cry out to you right now, God. Release the Nazarites, Lord, like John the Baptist, Lord. Crying in the desert, Lord. Burning in the desert for you. On fire for you, Lord. They would have no toleration in their heart for Jezebel, Lord. We would be a double portion generation of Nazarites, Lord. And we would cry out to you for revival in our land, Lord. That we would be the hinge of history, Lord. That we would burn for you, Lord. We would be so on fire for you. We would have no side issues, Lord. I just pray you would raise them up in the name of Jesus at the young age, Lord. At 12 instead of 21, Lord. Jesus. Brent, come here, son. Do you hear what God is saying to you? Yes, ma'am. That little girl was about eight years old. That boy was 12 years old. Do you still think you're too young to go get your mother? I don't think you're ever too young. I don't think you're ever too young. Brent, do you think you can go get your friends? I think I can. I know I can. I want you to look at Miss Karen's face. Do you think you're too young? Are you too young to pray? No. Are you too young to go and witness to your dad and to your mother? No. Are you too young to go find your uncle and your aunt that doesn't? No, no, you're not too young. You are not. Say, I'm not too young. I'm not too young. Now that scared the devil to death when you just said that. Sure. That just scared him to death. Say it again. I'm not too young. Oh, he's running now. He's scared to death. He wanted you to think you couldn't do it. He wanted, you know what he does? He puts fear in you and makes you afraid of what people might think. Oh, he's happy when you're afraid. The devil loves it when you say, I can't do that. I don't want to. Oh, I can't. She might make fun. Of I can't. I can't. I don't want to pray. I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to. Oh, he loves that. You, you say, some people are like, I'm shy. No, you're not shy. God didn't make you shy. That didn't come from your father. He didn't give you shy. He didn't give you a spirit of fear. God did not give you fear. That came from the devil. And you say, you say, I am not afraid. I am not shy. I am bold because the spirit of God is in me. And I am bold. Say it out loud. Say, I am bold. That's right. So when you pray, you pray bold prayers. You pray strong prayers. Say, I'm not afraid. 
No, you are not. I want to ask you, if you are willing in this room to say, God, I'm willing to go back and find my friends, my family. I'm willing to pray for them in Jesus' name. Now, would you look at Miss Karen? What if they don't want God? There's a scripture that is found in Philippians, the second chapter, that, said if, that says this. If you will pray for them, God will work in them and give them the desire to want God. Your prayers will make the difference. This is how we're going to close this conference. This last little video is the last one we're going to show you. This is also a friend of mine. This little boy's name is Justice. His daddy is on the, play, the piano playing. His daddy's name is James Aladrian. He's part of the ramp. He lives in Manchester, England. He preaches in our conferences often. He's very dear to my heart. His daddy was playing the piano and Justice is sitting on the stool and they're talking and then Justice begins to sing. Justice is a little boy that lives in Manchester, England. We have a ramp in Manchester, England. Justice begins to pray. This little boy, in this video, I think he's about seven-ish. And this little boy is still full of God, full of prayer. I was with him recently. He's praying in tongues. Justice will be praying in tongues. And I want you to watch this little boy. I want you to hear what he says. And this is the song I want you to leave this conference with. It's a very short video, but please listen. Watch. Guys, we are in the battle of the altars, and uh, if you're not praying, your altar is very weak and is almost dead, while the enemy's altar is burning strong. You must out. You must uh, make your altar outburn them. Wow. The more you. Uh, get entertained by stuff uh, physically and excited the more you get bored in the spirit yeah You're scared i used of the to enemy. be scared of the dark and i and i still only have one fear <laughs> spiders <laughs> still afraid of spiders so you used to be scared of the dark and then what happened just this and then I prayed, and then I'm not afraid of the dark anymore. So do you want to pray for children that are watching that are afraid of the dark? Lord, I banish every single fear of every single child, and even the children who aren't watching, uh, that they won't be afraid of anything, including me. Amen. For the sake of the gospel, for the glory of your name, Way.